Hi friends, this is Pastor Tom Van Duzer of Our Savior Lutheran Church in Kansas City, Kansas. Join us Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. or Sunday morning, 9 o'clock or 11, 11 a.m. Check us out on the website. Thanks for listening. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life in all its fullness. God wants you to be full, whole, well. God wants you to be well in your intellectual life, your social life, your physical life, your spiritual life, your occupational life, your emotional life, and your environmental life. might uh, have gotten the note that we are going to be looking at wellness. The various aspects of wellness in our lives as God's uh, people. Uh, and you know it's important to realize that there are, are many areas of our lives that God wants to be the Lord of. Not just one. Sort of reminds me of uh, something that happened to us a number of uh, summers ago. My kids were uh, they were still with us on vacation. I think junior high, one might have been in senior high, one still in elementary. And we went and visited uh, Ludington, Michigan, where I grew up, and uh, went to one of the favorite places that I enjoyed, the House of Flavors Ice Cream Parlor. Now, House of Flavors was awesome. One of their dishes was called the Pig's Dinner, and it came in a little wooden trough. You got four giant scoops of ice cream, you didn't get the choice, they just plopped four you know, sugary uh, 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 scoops down, and then they put four different kinds of toppings on it, and nuts and whipped cream and everything, and if you ate the whole thing, which I did once as a kid, you got a little button that said I was a pig at the House of Flavors there. So we went to this, and uh, it was about 5, 5.30, and um, looked at the menu, and I thought, uh, and Matthew, could you take me down just a little bit? I'm a little bit hot here. Um, the, um, you know, I thought, hold it, if we have hamburgers or, uh, you know, french fries or something like that, if we have a dinner and then have ice cream, there's not going to be enough room. So I said, kids, for this, uh, for this occasion, you get to just have ice cream for dinner. And when they came uh, with the, uh, the platter of food, there we had uh, five giant Sundays all set for us. Five giant Sundays, And the people were all looking. I said, hey, it's vacation. We can have ice cream for dinner if we want to. But you know, normally you sort of spread things out. Now, if I said, hey, here's your dinner. Now, Bill, I know you'd probably like this. Something all meat. Uh, there is a little vegetable on there. You see the, the pickle. I think that counts as a vegetable for most guys, right? An all meat dinner. Oh, man. what? A, but you know, you can't do that all the time. Or, you know, if you say, I'm going to be healthy, I'm going to have all fruit all the time. Well, the line to the bathroom would be um, pretty urgent, wouldn't it? I don't know about for you, but never mind. And uh, then, of course, for some of us, if we had just all dessert, that would be great. But you know, whenever you just concentrate on one thing, you don't get good, healthy nutrition. As a matter of fact, it's recommended that you have uh, you know, plenty of uh, vegetables and, uh, and fresh leafy stuff, but you do need your protein too. And uh, starches and carbohydrates are good for, for energy. A balanced meal is important. And so we're going to be looking at this balance that we have in our lives in Christ during these uh, June and July summers. Now today is Pentecost. And the time when we uh, celebrate the new life that, that each believer has in Jesus Christ. That time when, when God poured the Holy Spirit out upon all those who knew that Jesus had risen from the dead and was Lord and Savior of all. And what a joy it was for those people to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now we think of the Holy Spirit just as sort of like the, the witnessing part of God or the flashlight part of God, Miss Donna. Yeah, but the Holy Spirit has a lot more for us. He's the one that makes us a new creation in Christ. And in Christ, you are a new creation. Thanks so much, Luke, for 
reading this uh, passage of scripture from us. Uh, well, actually, let's take a look at Acts chapter 2. This is what happened at the end of, uh, of Acts. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And this is what Peter replied. He replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and all for, our, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. But you see, the Holy Spirit wants to do something very, very special for us. He wants to give us new life in Jesus. And that's what Luke read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In great verse. As a matter of fact, let's read this one together. Therefore, I, I don't hear it. Ready? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God. Now, when you have something new, you want everything to be new. Everything be, to be new. Uh, for example, if I told you, Robert, um, I got you a um, brand new baseball uniform. Would that be cool? Brand new baseball uniform? Except for the pants, they've been worn for 17 seasons. They got some holes in them uh, there. But that's okay, right? You want new pants too? Oh man, he's so, yeah. Uh, if I told you, Greg, got a new car, isn't that wonderful? Uh, and I understand that it already has 17,000 miles on it and needs a new muffler. Is that new? You'd say, no, I want everything new. And so when, when Paul said this, he said, all this is from God. You know, what is all? Does this mean, uh, you know, for our life in Christ? He said, all this is from God, this newness. Yes, I am new, one hour a week, God. And an hour and 45 minutes, because I go to Bible class. But the rest of the week, I'm still the same old guy. Now, all of this is from God. Do I say, well, God, just the little part here that I reserve for, you know, for Lutherans. That's me. No, I said, all of it's from God. It's just, just, the, just the spiritual part of me, just the, the Jesus part. All of this is from God. All of this. Jesus indeed said this. He said, uh, he was seated on the throne and said, I'm making everything new. Everything new. Now tell the person sitting next to you, uh, Jesus is making everything new. You know, do it right now. Jesus is making everything new. Yeah, Stan, tell her she's making everything new. Because he is making everything new. Everything. He'd even said it when he was uh, walking with his disciples. He said this, I've come that they might have life and have it to the full. You see, when he said to have it to the full, I, I love that Greek word there. It's periso, uh, the same word as perimeter. Everything that's inside the fence of your life, inside the wheel of your life, God wants you to have. Now certainly, when Jesus died on the cross for us, one of the main benefits was that our sins are forgiven. Peace with God is restored. Heaven is ours, and that is important. But there's other things that God has for us as well. As a matter of fact, God wants to, uh, to go through all the different areas of our lives. The intellectual part of our life. He cares what happens in our brain. The social part of our life. What happens with our friends and with our family. Physical part? Is that important? Well, if it weren't, why did we pray for all the physical needs of God's people? God cares about that. Spiritual, that's sort of a no-brainer. But occupational? Can you have an occupational part of your life if you're retired? You bet. The emotional part of your life. Jesus wants to be Lord of even your emotions. What happens in that uh, part of your life that, that gets you in the gut or makes you joyful? Environmental. Does God care what happens in the world? You bet. All of these, my friends, are part of what God has for us in our lives with him. And as we see that the Holy Spirit works in our lives, you know, these things happen more and more, and balance becomes a reality. Now, if you're still, still a bit skeptical about this, let me um, ask this. What would you think of a pastor if you had a pastor who loves Jesus, 
and knows he's saved and, uh, you know, and knows how to tell that to people. But he refuses to take care of his body. He won't get a checkup. His blood pressure is out of this world. And frankly, it looks like he's got diabetes, but he didn't want to find out. You'd say, hey, pastor, take care of the body that God gave you. What about this? What if you had a pastor who, um, uh, you know, loved Jesus, preached the gospel, but took the kids out on a youth trip, and while they were driving down the highway, threw his trash out the window. You go past his house, and it's, it's a wreck. As a matter of fact, he comes in the office, and you can tell, you know, he hasn't washed his clothes in a while. Ooh, that would be very positive, would it? Would you want a pastor who never read a book, never invested in a class, never sat down with brother pastors or other intellectuals and, and challenged some of, the, uh, you know, some of the thoughts of this age, never really, uh, never really invested in his brain? Would you want a pastor who complained that he had no friends, but frankly, his family's not too fond of him either. And you know why? Because you went to a, a church event and he sat in the corner with his cell phone in his, in his hand, uh, not connecting with anybody. You'd say, this guy is unhealthy because Jesus came to make everything new. And when the Holy Spirit takes hold of you, he does make every part of you new. It's baseball season. How many of you have seen the excellent movie 42? Uh, the movie about Jackie Robinson. It's been out a few years. Uh, they're a great, great movie about the first black man to play in the Major League Baseball. Uh, Jackie Robinson was uh, hired by Branch Rickey uh, to break the color barrier. Branch uh, said, uh, you know, he realized that there were many excellent black baseball players. But as he brought uh, Jackie into his team, he realized that Jackie had to be more than a great baseball player. People aren't going to like this. They're going to do anything to get you to react. Echo a curse with a curse, and they'll, they'll hear only yours. Follow a blow with a blow, and they'll say, the Negro lost his temper. Your enemy will be out in force. You cannot meet him on his own low ground. We win with hitting, running, feeling. Only that. We win if the world is convinced of two things. That you are a fine gentleman and a great baseball player. By all accounts, Jackie Robinson was both that. He was both an excellent baseball player and he was a fine, well-rounded man. He was a man who was faithful to his wife, remained faithful to his wife until God took, uh, took her to heaven. He was also a great citizen. He was a second lieutenant in the army. And he was active uh, uh, in, um, uh, in bringing, uh, bringing civil rights to uh, black Americans. He was an athlete in many, many sports. But what most people remembered was, he was a nice guy. He was well-rounded. He said this at the end of his, uh, at the end of his uh, career. He said, the game of baseball is great, but the greatest thing is what you do after your career is over. You see, my friends, Jesus wants to be part of all of our lives. Sunday morning is great, but the best thing is how you walk with Jesus after Sunday morning is done. That's sort of a paraphrase of what Jackie said. Yeah. What do you do when Sunday morning is over? Do you see him as Lord of all of your life? This summer, we're going to examine the various parts of our lives to see how Jesus can be Lord of, uh, of each one of them. We're going to see his love and his forgiveness and his empowerment that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you too can live a well life. I think that's bad English. Should be, you can be, live a good life but you can live a well life. Amen? Amen. Amen.